My name is Luke, and welcome back to another Interbiotics tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Interbiotics X-Series Arviz control panel. This is a control panel that lives inside of Arviz that allows you to control some of the basic aspects of your robot and its configurations without using things like the Python API, the command line, or more complicated verbose ROS nodes. So to demonstrate this, we're going to launch the XSARM control package. Uh, we're going to set our robot model equal to WX200, because that's what this is. And we are going to set the robot name equal to its default, which is just the robot name, which is WX200. So launching that, we can see the Interbiotics control panel in the bottom left. Um, this control panel appears anywhere where the XSARM descriptions, packages, Arviz config file is used. Um, so XSARM control is an example of one of those. Um, if it does not appear and you would like it to be in your Arviz configuration, you can go to Panels, Add New Panel, and then under Interbiotics XS Arviz, you just select that, and it'll load and appear down here. So to use this, we need to enter our robot namespace. And the robot namespace is just what the robot name is. And because we left it at its default, it is just the robot model, which is WX200. To update the namespace, you click Update. And you can see that these buttons have been enabled. Um, we have several different tabs. Uh, the Home Sleep tab obviously just sends the robot to its home pose and its sleep pose. Uh, the Torque tab allows you to torque on and off uh, the arm group or the all group or any of the single motors in the all group. So to demonstrate that, torque off all of them. And just as warning, you saw right there, it collapsed because they all torqued off. Uh, so make sure you're holding onto it or it's in a safe resting position like the sleep pose. So they're all torqued off. We can lift it up, move it around. You can see it moving around in Arviz. We can re-enable that. It's stationary. Change it to single. And we'll disable the waste servo so you can see it not moving around here. Once it's disabled, we can move it around. So we'll just re-enable that. Just to make sure we will re-enable all of the servos. Send it to its home pose and then it's sleep pose. So the next tab is the operating modes tab. Um, same thing, you can change the arm group or any single joint in the arm group. Um, you can change its operating mode. So position, extended position, velocity, current, current based position in PWM, we'll leave that alone. Uh, same thing with time, you have, or same thing with type, you have type or velocity. Again, we'll leave it as time. Uh, profile velocity and profile acceleration, you can change those as well. So instead of 2000, which is setting the length of time for each movement, so its default is two seconds or 2000 milliseconds, we can change that to like 4000. Um, and again, when you set the operating modes, uh, same thing with torque, it will collapse uh, because we are writing to the robot's EEPROM and when you edit things in the EEPROM, you have to torque the robot off uh, before that. So, but it's just a very brief period of time before the robot torques back on. So set the operating mode, they're torqued back on. And now if we send it to its home pose and its sleep pose, you can see that it takes you know, 4,000 milliseconds or four seconds. Okay, uh, and then the reboot tab is just the reboot service. You can reboot the arm or the all groups or any single one. So I'm not going to actually demonstrate this, but it's fairly straightforward. Uh, this is the smart reboot flag in the reboot service. Um, it will search through all of the servos, check if it has the hardware error flag, and reboot, or reboot those specifically. And then this one is the enable flag. Um, this will just uh, reboot the 
uh, reboot all of the motors that you select, and then re-enable their torque afterwards. So get register values. Here we can read specific register values. Um, so for example, if we wanted to read the present temperature of all of the servos, um, we can, once you select it, it loads the description of that register into this little panel here. So it's the uh, internal temperature of the Dynamixels in units of one degree Celsius, and they're all about 30, which makes sense. Do the same thing with goal position, present position, etc. Um, and then the final tab is the emergency stop tab. Um, this should not serve as um, the only emergency stop that you do because it is a software emergency stop. Uh, but it will kill or attempt to kill the excess SDK node. Um, so you can see the robot is there. It's reading the joint states, sending commands. We press that, robot just fell, it's untorqued, and you can see that it's not reflected, or its movements are not reflected in RVIS. And if we open the console, we can see that it died. The control panel can also be used with the simulation node. So that has limited features because the simulation node has some limited features. Uh, for example, torque does nothing, uh, reboot does nothing, um, but you can still send it to its home pose, its sleep pose. You can change, yeah, we'll set that to five, you can change the profile and the operating mode. So it's moving real slow. And you can also kill the simulation node as well. So one final feature um, that's kind of useful. You only have to do this really once. Um, so we'll set the namespace of the robot and update it. And you can see up here that it is, or the configuration of RViz has changed. So if we save that, that just saves it to the xsrmdescription.rviz file. Uh, we will exit out of there and load it back up. And you can see that our namespace uh, has been remembered, you know, saved to the configuration file and loaded from the configuration file. So that concludes this tutorial. Let us know if you have any questions or want any additional features in the comments below. Thanks for watching.